a late replacement on the bill this evening is Tyan Booth. Saw him uh, box against Chris Eubank Jr. at the Glow Arena in Blue Water three and a bit years ago. Tall, rangy, very awkward too. And in fact, he posed Eubank yeah, Jr. Looks at a number of problems in the early rounds until Eubank just was able to get the measure of and I think he stopped him from memory in about the seventh or eighth round but certainly went a little further than Eubank would have liked. You see yeah, it middleweight. Very tall and rangy for a middleweight, yeah. And now make some noise for The tyre boo is really up against it. The man they call Little Mike, short, compact, bullish, operates in that kind of semi peekaboo style performance against Wayne Reed was a standout one this time last year. He's the sort of fighter who really knows how to finish you once he's got you hurt. No qualms about throwing the kitchen sink. Turkish heritage. Resides in Enfield these days. And uh, he's making his way here. Enjoying every moment of his entrance to the ring. 10 and 0 so far with four KOs since turning professional in really 2014. Taking his time to come I remember I sparred him actually. He doesn't like to take one step back. Very good fight. Against, against the tall, rangy boxer, if this guy could box, yeah. it can give him a lot of problems. He boxes. had three years out though. He's, uh, a bit of injury problems. Ladies and Six three minute rounds at 12 stone two. Under Osgill in the black shorts. Tyan Booth, a taller man in the red, but Osgill knows only one gear, and that's forwards. And that's fast forward at that. Absolutely. But this is a classic fight of styles making fights. Tall boxer against a short, aggressive fighter. A huge number of Turkish operators in the pro ranks at present. Avni Yildirim is currently the WBC international super middleweight champion and mandatory for the first WBC title defence against the winner of Callum Smith and Anthony Durrell in LA in September. Selka Gaidin, one of the standout Turkish pros as well in recent years. And Oskar's made a good start to his career 10 0, 4 KOs so far. And everyone who speaks pretty highly of him. Aggressive. Powerful. Oh, there's the power right there. The right hand over the top is troubled Booth. And he has to hang on. Booth is back onto that jab again, which shows he's definitely taken that punch well. And dropped his lead hand just to show that he's okay. Wouldn't say that's a, a smart thing to do, but 
Booth has got to try and keep this one long, keep that long jab pumping out. Try it's and hard give. against someone coming in so aggressively. And it is, and you can see why he's got the acronym of Little Mike, because he's got that kind of peekaboo style, just bobbing and weaving, short arms, but the way he wings those shots in from out of the line of eyesight, out of the peripheral vision, he can often make punches very hard to, to read, see where they're coming from. Very true. Booth with that low front hand, just inviting pressure, really. And that's what you don't want to do against a fight like that, show any signs of inviting him in. You want to make it as difficult as possible. Absolutely, try and establish yourself, and try and hold the centre of the ring. He's just got that lead hand dangling by his side. And Booth also tends to just lean forward a bit, which you also don't want to do against a fighter like that. You want to kind of lean back and make yourself seem further away than you really are. Throws that overhand right, almost a bit like Marcos Maidana, almost turns the knuckle right over the yeah. top of the shot. And throws catch you near the top of the head, really dangerous shots. And Very there it is. dangerous shot. Uh, right on cue, wings it in as we speak. Just comes marching forwards, doesn't he? Well, I see what's a little cut above the right eye of Under Osgall there. Oh, uh, yeah. That's the trickle of blood coming down the outside. Looks to be yeah. running round the outside of the face, which is pretty lucky if that's the path that the, the blood's going to take, because I guess the, the, the key is that it doesn't go into the eye. Absolutely, yeah. I will say the, the best place to have a cut is, is directly below the eye. If at all. <laughs> if at all, of course. But uh, well, hopefully that one won't trouble him too much. But I think the corner have only just spotted that. They've just got the cotton ball buds ready. It's not really something you want to pick up so early on in the fight. Of course, six rounds this one, so plenty of time for things to develop, including the cut. But, well, I suppose stylistically, pretty much what we would have expected looking at the stature of the two men walking to the ring. <laughs> Booth has certainly had pockets of, of success, but I think the problem is, as Osgore becomes more comfortable in this head-hunting, forward-marching fashion. If Booth can't establish a jab or some shots to keep his man honest, he's going to struggle to deal with this kind of relentless pressure. Very true, but at the same time, Onda does need to make sure he isn't lunging in as crazy as he was before because of that cut, so that kind of makes it a little bit easier for Booth. You see Booth already looking for the left hook because oh, he's seen that cut. So he's jab, he's hooking off the jab. There it is. And I think he's thinking anything he can do to try and open that up and cause Osgood a few problems. That's got to be his imperative. So he's on his bike here, check left hooking, throwing the jab out. And is there just a, a bit of urgency from Osgood as a result of that? Just wipes it again with the glove. Didn't miss by much with that counter right hand over the top. It's Booth again, just popping out that jab and then hanging on, using his height in the clinch. As I say, I think people were strangely surprised and impressed by his performance against Eubank about three years ago. You can see he's, very, he's a very relaxed fighter and an intelligent fighter as well, so... Uh you can see he's never going to put himself in a position of danger. Whenever he feels he's in danger, he just backs away. And he almost drops that hand to invite you in, but he's very in control of what you're doing. And as you've seen just there, as soon as Onda gets any, any too close, holds him. I suppose the one benefit of having the hand low out in front of you is that you can... I think can. what separates him is just the fact that he isn't as aggressive. He doesn't take opportunities as much. He just flicks out that jab, very good defensively, but offensively, he just got a little flicky jab, which isn't going to cause Onda any problems at all. He's not, I wouldn't say Booth has landed anything of any significance so far. Just trying to employ that sort of jab, jab, grab tactic so far as the bleeding from the right eye of Osgood just continues. I don't think that it's particularly worsened. 
And again, Booth just making himself awkward and hard to catch clean. And Oscar's going to make sure he doesn't get frustrated. the double negative for Osgoor is that while he marches forwards, if Booth is intent to just pot shot with a jab and then spoil, I mean, when you're coming forwards, it is then quite easy if you're the taller man to just grab and hold on to your opponent as, as you as see there. Just, yeah, You're speaking it as it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of luck, I think. And there we go, round two. An um, interesting one, this. Osgoor not having it all his own way. And you can see Booth is getting a bit confident now. He's smiling a couple of times and you can see the desperation in Osgoor, but um, we'll see what happens in this next stage. I think Ronda needs to just relax more and focus on just cutting down the ring and not lunging in anymore. If he can pin Booth into a corner and keep him there rather than lunging in and giving him a way out, then I think he'll have a bit more success. Just entering the halfway point of proceedings here at York Hall in Bethnal Green. On Osgo not having it his own way against Tyan Booth. A cut above the eye, and Booth making himself rangy, tall, and awkward as he is, using those physical assets to the best of his ability. Good work to the body, though, from Osgo. That was very smart in terms of going to the body. Can force Booth to drop both of his hands. Booth just shaking his head, looking to pot shot the shorter man and then move his feet out of and range. And the confidence now, because he's seeing the desperation in Onda, where it's giving him confidence. He seems to be able to read quite comfortably when Osgul is swinging in, and he's pretty short arms, Osgul, so if he can get you on the inside, He'll then be he's very successful. successful. Yeah. But I think the, the, the problem he's having, again, is that every time he does get in the inside, Booth just holds and grabs and spoils. And Also because he's lunging and he's not really stepping in with smaller steps, which will be able to counter anything that Booth does. So the balance is a little it's bit balance. off. So if saying. he takes little steps in, he'll be able to get himself in there in a comfortable range and work, but he's not, he's lunging in. So it's Booth now with his man muscled onto the ropes, trying a bit of inside fighting this time. Perhaps not the most sensible tactic. And look at the posturing from the taller man, just flicking out that lead jab, tripling it, quadrupling it up. And Oscar winging in those shots. Booth gives him a little smile and he's frustrating a man in the black shorts. Still, Booth hasn't thrown anything of any significance, just all pop shots. Mm. And just gesturing, but... As you say, the, the power and the aggression was coming from Oscar. That was the best shot he's landed so far, arguably. Again, Booth shaping up, trying to invite Oscar to throw. Is that blood Booth. coming from the nose of Booth? Yes, it is. That was patient from Osgoor, it was just a momentary... And that's what he needs, look at this now, he's taking little steps, he's taking his time, and this is what he needed to be doing from the beginning. None of this lunging, and he's had success, there we go, straight to the body. But he's more calm now, and he can judge his distances a lot more when he's taking these small steps. And just again, though, the signs that he's getting frustrated, his corner is shouting at him, and as you say, trying not to rush his work. I guess when you're sort of DNA is that of come forward brawler. It's uh, sometimes difficult to just check yourself and measure your distance and think in a more calculating manner and actually what you want to do is fight. And also I imagine frustrating therefore if you've got a man like Tian Booth in front of you that is intent on just making things a little bit un uncomfortable and awkward for you. And this is where Styles make fights because this is the exact type of fights he needs and the exact type of sparring I'd say more importantly he needs. So we can deal with situations like that. We need a really tall, annoying fighters like this. 
I suppose the very ones you don't want to get in the ring with perhaps are the the best ones to prepare you for these there kind of go. eventualities. Yeah. And I think you should have definitely had a lot more of that type of sparring. So he could learn how to cut down the ring because he's looking very frustrated there. And Tian is able to see that and that's making him relax more. And incidentally, we mentioned Chris Eubank Jr. earlier and love him or hate him. It was how he learned his craft doing the rounds in America. Oh, all, everywhere. All the different gyms and Europe as well and actually sparring anyone he can find. And the... Uh, I guess the benefit of that is whilst the sparring is not always top quality or necessarily world level or, or whatever actually this stage of your career it doesn't really need to be you just need to get in there with loads of different styles different statures heights so of opponent and you've got that kind of experience when you do come in against someone a little bit unorthodox like a Tyan Booth, you was it Mr. Six are better prepared. This one's a six rounder, that's right. Just said fourth and final, so. Uh, ah, I do apologise. Well, our, our information on the sheets is, uh, well, probably not wrong. Maybe things are just uh, have been changed. So this one, as I said, Tyan Booth came in as a late replacement, so maybe this okay, was originally yeah. as a six, and maybe if Booth has been called up at only a couple of days' notice, then a four would make a little bit more sense. And actually, that changes the narrative slightly because it means osgill has got to try and force things and try and make things happen. He hasn't got the time that we originally thought to play this one out and try and work his way into it slowly. Very true, but at the same time, Tian has only been throwing little pop shots mm. and he's not really been that aggressor, so this still is quite an even fight. Absolutely. As I much as uh, Under shown a lot of frustration, he is the one who's pushing this fight. Absolutely. I, it depends on what you're, you're looking at as a judge, really, and uh, as you'll say, in a close fight, you tend to favour the aggressor. And, and the one who's landed the most significant punches. Yeah. And that, the cut to Under's head wasn't necessarily a punch. No. But the bleed into Tian's nose, I'm pretty sure that was. But there's definitely a lot that Under has to go back and work on in terms of... Again, Osgoole marching forwards, Booth with a little check left hook and then holds on as he has customarily throughout this encounter so far, the fourth and final round here at your call. It's not caught fire in the way that we perhaps hoped it would, I think largely in part to Booth's slightly negative approach to this and he's not allowed Osgoole to set his feet regularly and, and land those big winging shots as we know he can and we've seen on a number of occasions before and you see him just squaring up that Mike Tyson peekaboo style the gloves pressed together by his chest and again that was one of the things Mike Tyson did do so well against almost everybody who was taller than he he was only what 5'10 5 5'11 5 there's a 16 stone heavyweight and he was able to Bob and weave his head, come forwards. And, and use his height to make himself even smaller. And then spring up into position oh, with those scary. body Very hooks, scary. uppercuts, incredible. So, well, certainly lessons to be learned. In fact, I remember sparring against Billy Joe Saunders and he really used that, using his height and making it shorter and then springing up to pounce on him in terms of distance. Of course, under the tutelage of Adam Booth, that kind of style is only going to be exacerbated more because so many of those fighters from David Hay through George Groves a few years ago all adopted that kind of crouched stance the low set wide base most definitely uh, seeing it with josh kelly as well very nice stylistic uh, traits that adam booth breeds as we come to the end of the final round between tian booth and Andre osgill we'll go to the judges scorecards and very interesting match yeah, well, we'll see how this is uh, this has been scored and how the judges have seen it i'm interested to know what they have favored you've said joshua that you think the the more aggressive Powerful and eye-catching shots were landed by the man in the black shorts. Most definitely. Definitely a close fight at that, but mm. if I was going to give it to anyone, it'd have to be the aggressor. Just in fact, just the fact that uh, Tian didn't take any opportunity to land any significant punches. And gesturing, you can't really score that. He was very comfortable in there, yes, but in terms of punches landed, no. Ladies and gentlemen, let's show your appreciation for both boxers. After four premium rounds, we go 
goes for the referee scoring ringside. He has scored about 38 points to 38 points. We have a draw. Please congratulate five wrestlers. Well, got to be honest with you, Joshua, I take your points about the power and aggression, but actually, I can't disagree with that as a result. Do you know what? You can't. Tyan, well done. I mean, not box for three years and to come and nick a draw, I mean, that's a very good result. Yeah, especially being the away fighter, you know, against the home guy who sold a load of tickets. I'm a nobody, you know, to the judges and the ref. So, yeah, I did all right. I did okay. Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you frustrated him massively. You were flicking the jab out, putting him off. He was trying to duck under it. And then you started taunting him in the third. Well, that's what I mean. I was getting into his mind, you know what I mean? And he started, like, lunging and missing. So, the mind games worked. It didn't really land that many. He was quite good, though. He's all right. Yeah, you rate, how did you rate him? I mean, you fought, you fought with some top, top guys. To be honest, I, I only found out about this fight about two days ago. Yeah, so, I didn't have time to prepare. You know, for like a fight. Right. You know, running, running and shadow boxing is different to fighting. So, right. ideally, I'd like more notice. You didn't, yeah. Well, you didn't look like you'd been out of the ring for that long. Time. Yeah, I've been, I've been sparring with like Kel Brook. You know, all them top guys. So, I was well prepared. So you, you're planning to have more fights now. You're going to get back in and go for more. I love boxing in your call. It's a good atmosphere. I love it here. I love to come back. Oh, I'd love to have you back. Yeah, thanks a lot, fellas. I appreciate it.